I don't have my ear to the ground about every St. Louis happening like some folks seem to, and no one can hear about everything they'd like to know, not in a timely manner anyway. But here's something I managed to not completely miss, the seemingly last moments of a grand 19th century survivor house inconveniently in the way of nine-finger progress. From what I gather, the house has been owned by the adjacent entertainment venue since it opened as the St. Louis Theater in 1925. The St. Louis Symphony acquired the venue in 1966, renovated the daylights out of it, and opened it as Powell Hall in 1968. As of 2001, historically meaningful 97-year-old Powell Hall enjoys legal protections as a registered landmark, but this 136-year-old arguably unique mansion built for a prominent 19th century St. Louis businessman in the Queen Anne style by a well-known St. Louis architect with an ever-dwindling supply of creations to point to does not. This is the Culver House, built in 1886 when this stretch of Delmar Boulevard was still known as Morgan Street. He only got to live in it about 12 or 13 years when he passed at what we'd consider today the relatively young age of 59. Afterwards, the home was enjoyed for many years by another St. Louis businessman and his family, whose name I didn't remember from the useful webpage I found before it inexplicably broke a couple hours afterward. According to the current interweb, the final inhabitant of the building is simply identified as Portfolio Gallery and Education, presumably about and operated by the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra, who has opted to replace the asset and adjoining parking lot with a new $100 million facility expansion. The house was offered up for free to anyone willing to pay and execute its relocation, but alas, no one stepped up, so they're simply going to demolish it. I wish I found out about all this sooner, maybe I could have done more documenting. But I didn't. I only heard about it on Saturday, July 16th, 2022, from a small news report dropped late Friday afternoon the day before, indicating demolition is beginning on Monday. In response to this, I immediately dropped everything to leave my cool, cozy bunker to rush over there, camera in hand to get some meaningless footage while I still could, despite 98 degree city sauna services. So what's the point and served purpose of this video? I'm not entirely sure myself. It's a poor effort of any historical account, unsatisfyingly limited in camera scope, and lackluster as an informed editorial. It's not breaking news to any true St. Louis City enthusiasts or journalists, nor timely enough to make any difference to the fate of the building. But I think and hope there is some value to be found, aesthetic probably, even as just a fleeting, forlorn gaze at something gone to serve sentiment and reflect upon, and something satisfies me about creating and contributing unique scraps of media to the lexicons. And now here comes the editorial. I'm happy for the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra and their new exciting expansion, and not begrudging of their progress and commitment to St. Louis whatsoever in exercising their legal property rights. It was noble to offer the house up to anyone who cared, but I'm let down that no one did. We are losing this careworn but undilapidated edifice of the city to collective inaction. Someone should have saved this house. I see a number of empty plots nearby that could use the infill, and how much could it have really cost to move it? A million bucks? Sure, that's an incomprehensibly large amount of money I'll likely never know, but it's peanuts to rich people. The house would also be a pretty penny to restore, but a free landmark house paired with a good deal on a lot to plant it on is a measurable advantage. If your circle of peers are the sort who spend millions on McMansion drywall specials, I'd think the distinguishing player move would be to curate something like this for a residence. Part of me feels the SLSO could have done more, 
perhaps allocating maybe 1% of their venture to saving the house nearby for themselves for a while and figure out what to do with it later. I don't think they gave the situation enough time for a resolution either, but I expect they are anxious to have their new prize finished, possibly in line with the centennial anniversary of the theater. I'm not as sure as I should or could be about that I didn't go down any rabbit holes. I'm just a casual filmmaker, a source to enjoy, not rely on. Thanks for watching.